Church of St. Petersburg virtual service. We welcome all people regardless of color, race, language, gender identity, immigration status, country of origin, ability, or political party to our service. We want to acknowledge that our church is located on land that was originally inhabited by indigenous people including the Tokabaga tribe. If you're a first-time visitor or would like more information about our church, please contact our minister, Rev. Jack Donovan, by email at jfdonovan at bellsouth.net. My name is John Motter, and I'm a member of this church and a team lead along with Pat Fling for our church's work with FAST. I believe in the work of FAST because it involves many members from the community voicing their concerns for what they're experiencing in real time and then working on solutions to those problems. Our service today will be centered on the work of FAST, which stands for Faith in Action for Strength Together. Together we will explore the concept of creating justice inspired by the words of Dr. Rev. Martin Luther King Jr. The ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence over that by the good people. Good morning. I am Tony Kamat, a member of the church and an active volunteer with FAST. I have been serving on the Affordable Housing Committee this past year. We will begin the service with our chalice lighting. Let's say together the words that remind us of our commitment to one another. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Now let's take a moment, close, our, close your eyes if you wish, and ponder these words from John Saxton. Remind us this morning, and with the dawning of each new day, that the moral arc of the universe is long, but that it bends toward justice. Grant us the strength and courage to stand up and speak out against injustice, discrimination, and oppression, to reclaim in this day and time the mantle of prophets who throughout the ages have spoken truth to power and called those with, with power and privilege to honor, respect, protect, and care for the least of those among us, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, the sick, the broken, the forgotten, the strangers in our land. Grant us, too, wisdom and humility that we might speak our truth in love, remembering that hatred and bitterness can never cure the disease of fear. Accompany us as you did those brave souls who, in the face of police and horses and billy clubs, crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge and walked from Selma to Montgomery to demand that the most fundamental right in a democratic society, the right to vote, not be denied to any citizen of this nation. This we pray in the spirit of all that we hold sacred, 
right, good and true. Amen. May it be so. Let's continue our service by singing, We Are Building a New Way. We are building a new way. We are building a new way. We are building a new way, feeling stronger every day. We are building a new way. We are working to be free. We are working to be free. We are working to be free. Hate and greed and jealousy. We are working. Peace and freedom is our crown. Peace and freedom is our cry. Peace and freedom is our cry. Without these, this world will die. Peace and freedom is our cry. some announcements for today, please be sure to read your church's email and check out meetings and schedules on the church website. There's a lot going on despite our physical isolation. We will be having Zoom Fast House meetings this year on September 20th, one from 4 to 5.30 and one from 6 to 7.30. Please contact either myself, John Motter, or Pat Fling if you'd like to join us. The house meetings are a way to deepen our connection to each other and your invitation to share your personal concerns on an issue that touches your life directly. One other announcement, today during the service, you will have the opportunity to make your electronic donation to the church while we have a musical interlude. There is now a link to allow you to easily contribute to our church. Please click on the white circle with the eye in the upper right hand corner of your screen to donate to the important work of UU St. Pete. Also, Keep in mind that we are doing Share the Plate uh, weeks throughout the year, and those will be listed in the infinite. It's a time to give a little bit extra to some of the specific projects that UU St. Pete is working on. Now's the time that we share a few joys and concerns. Uh, we have none that were uh, turned in, but if you're at home watching, feel free to type a joy or concern into the chat box so that your fellow congregants can see them. Um, I would say that uh, last weekend, one of the activities was a walk and wave. And if you either received company or were one of those that was waving, keep in mind how important this work is and how much better either you felt or you made a, uh, another person feel. Maybe you could do that even on an unofficial way going forward in the next month. Good morning, my name is Janae Johnson and I am your Religious Education and Communications Coordinator here at Unitarian Universalist Church of St. Petersburg, Florida. Today I will be sharing the story for all ages. This story is called A Rose Would Never Be Upset with the Sunflower. Laura was new in town. She was a mocha-hued, green-eyed, puffy-haired black girl from Montgomery, Alabama. She grew up with her father's mother when her mother passed away at childbirth. Her Gigi, what she called her, taught her everything she needed to know about crochet, knitting, cooking, preserving, cleaning, and more. She would knit the newborn's clothing when families from their town would need it. She would sell jellies and jams at the peak of each summer for the winter. 
Gigi wanted her to learn as much as she could teach her. She told Laura about the history of Montgomery and how she wanted better for her grandbaby. Now baby, there is no sense in not liking someone's skin color living in this world. All there are are many colors like the many flowers. You don't see a rose upset with a sunflower, nor do you see a turtle judge a snail. She would tell her all kinds of stories on the porch, after school, every day, until sundown. One day, Laura came home from school a bit early. A young boy had called her a name she never heard of before, but she knew it was said to hurt her feelings. Gigi, can I talk to you? She said. Come on in the kitchen, baby. Help me mush these strawberries for our jam. Laura walked in sadly. Gigi, a boy called me a name today and it was not my own, but the other children laughed at me and began to pull my hair and poke me in my eyes because they said they were fake. I was so upset, Gigi, and the teacher, she only laughed at me. Why is it now that they bother me? Gigi took a moment, took an exhale. <sighs> hmm. She pat her head and sat down at the dining room table. Now baby, when I sent you to that school, it was to get a better education because the school in our town could barely get any books. See, what I was thinking was, how can you study if you can't read? So I chose that school to cross town with all the white children. What you have experienced today, and I'm so sad that you did, is what's called racism. What is that, Gigi? Now see, whenever Laura didn't know a word, and sometimes Gigi couldn't explain it either, she would point to the dictionary next to the Bible on the armoire. Laura read it aloud. The inability or refusal to recognize the needs, rights, dignity, or value of people of particular races or geographical origins. More widely, the devaluation of various traits of character intelligence as typical or particular peoples. Gigi, why do people do this? Don't they all know that we are all like many flowers? Sweetheart, come here, baby. Now, some people don't see us as equal, let alone like a flower, because a deeper history our great-grandparents had lived through still plagues energetically through this day. Sometimes, my dear, people cannot see past their own fear of their own reality. Sometimes, people are just how they are because they do not know any better. Now, this does not make their actions any better at all because some people go an extra mile and take a life just to prove it. And the point that I'm trying to make here today is to show you that we cannot stop something that people don't wish to see, baby, is a thing. It hurts when all we want to do is learn and be considered equal, but there are some people who simply disagree. So there comes crimes committed to our people with an injustice system run by those kinds of people. We often never get justice, baby, that we rightfully deserve. Why, Gigi? That makes no sense. If we're like many flowers, that means the only thing that is different is what is seen on the outside. We all have the same things on the inside. I, I mean, when I was a kid, I would play with Kyle and Amy. We would play for a few minutes, but their parents would pull them inside when they saw me. I would be left outside alone. They would wave from the window and their parents would shut the blinds. Kyle, Amy, and I, we never saw color. And I never saw their color until now. We never talked about it because it's not what defined us. We knew how to play and that was that. I just wish adults knew that and stopped teaching their kids to be mean. My feelings are truly hurt. Upset by what her grandmother had shared with her, I'm sorry, upset with what her grandchild had shared with her, Gigi went into her shoe bin and grabbed a sandal. She took the bus all the way across town to Laura's school and gave the teacher a piece of her mind while waving her shoe. All the while, Laura swore she was going to hit her upside the head with it. As they were being escorted out the door, Gigi did exactly what Laura thought. What? Now, baby, don't you laugh. <laughs> she should be happy. All I want is equality and not revenge. Revenge would make me the same type of person she is, and that is no good for me, baby. <laughs> Laura and Gigi took the bus back across town. 
went home and got a box in the closet. Counted up the money she had saved over the years and moved out west to California. Time had passed. Laura was 13, now a young teen with an activist heart. She had begun high school and spoke at many rallies for justice. She wrote poetry and sang so she can share her songs with preschool students to share their anti-racism, to start their anti-racism education early on. The people respected her for her stance against injustice. Her Gigi saw her graduate high school and shortly departed after that. The sweet smell of strawberry jelly would pass through her nostrils every time she conducted a speech. Laura would share at the end of all her speeches words from her Gigi. You don't see a rose upset with a sunflower, nor do you see a turtle judge a snail. We are people. We are like many flowers. FAST is a collection of 42 local faith communities working together to change injustice by creating systemic policy change. Our method is community organizing. Community organizing is a democratic strategy used by social movements, labor unions, underrepresented communities, and marginalized groups to gain rights, win collective political power, and create positive change. Community organizing brings people directly affected by the problem together to solve problems and reach shared goals. Community organizing is one of the most powerful strategies in the world for creating social change. Throughout history, there are many examples of small communities who transformed, the, transformed culture and overcame major systemic oppression through effective organizing. FAST uses the process of organizing that include these stages. One, listen to the people. We do this at house meetings where people are asked to identify the issues that touch them directly, that cause the most pain or hardship. Two, choose the issue to work on together. We do this during an assembly where those who attended the house meetings vote together to choose the issues. Learn about the issue in depth. We do this through research meetings where we meet with experts, ask well-prepared questions, and discuss what we have learned. Cut the issue to create a strategy for change. This is where we create a strategy that has a specific desired local outcome, can create meaningful systemic change, can be accomplished within a realistic time frame, will bring people together from diverse congregations. Five, identify the target, often an elected or appointed leader who has the power to create the change. Six, organize a series of meetings with the target to present our case and push for the identified change. Bring large numbers of people together in an action to either celebrate the target's agreement to make the change or to publicly continue to push for the change if they have refused previously. Follow up to ensure that the outcome is accomplished. Together we can create powerful change to create a better future for those most in need in our community. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Hello, my name is Sarah Ward. I'm a member of Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church and a leader with FAST. Justice work requires power and FAST power comes from its organized members, the diverse members of our 40 plus congregations. At the heart of our justice ministry work is holding officials accountable 
for the social justice issues in our community. We do that in a number of ways, including holding a Nehemiah action where we annually bring together over 3,000 individuals representing congregations throughout the county. Last year, we worked together on the need for better access to mental health services and affordable housing and youth suspensions from school. It is important that we present a united front with representation from diverse congregations throughout the county. These issues affect people of all races and creeds, but those with the greatest needs are given the loudest voice in our work. We show our strength in numbers and in the diversity of our membership. Diversity is not only important to our social justice work with elected officials, it enhances the relationships among our member congregations also. Working together helps us to build better and healthier communities where we value each other and realize the entire community benefits when issues of justice are eradicated. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. All your life, you were only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird fly. Blackbird fly into the light of the dark black night. <laughs> church and a leader in FAST representing UU St. Pete. I've been a big sister 
to many children whose families struggle to survive. I've seen firsthand what it's like when a child tells me that she had to skip meals that week because the family's rent was due and they didn't want to get evicted. They were paying over 50% of their earned income on rent. Economic stability and security are crucial to an individual's well-being. I believe in the work of FAST because I have seen firsthand how effective it is in creating social change on a policy level. It engages everyday people across race and religion to work together to create the kind of community that is fair to all. When we witness injustice, I believe it is important to speak out and take action. Sometimes we have heard from our fellow Unitarian Universalists, why does FAST need to tell the school board what to do? Or aren't the city council or the county commissioners smart enough to figure out solutions on their own? Or do you need to push that hard to achieve results? The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his letter from a Birmingham jail has a relevant answer. He wrote, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live within the narrow provincial outside agitator idea. You deplore demonstrations taking place in Birmingham, but your statement fails to express a similar concern for the conditions that brought about the demonstrations. I am sure that none of you would want to rest content with the superficial kinds of social analysis that deals mainly with the effects and does not grapple with the underlying concerns. It is unfortunate that demonstrations are taking place in Birmingham, but it is even more unfortunate that the city's white power structure left the black community with no alternative. There have been more unsolved bombings of black homes and churches in Birmingham than in any other city in the nation. These are the hard, brutal facts of the case. On the basis of these conditions, black leaders sought to negotiate with the city's fathers, but the latter consistently refused to engage in good faith negotiation. Our hopes have been blasted and the shadow of deep disappointment settled upon us. We have no alternative except to prepare for direct action whereby we would present our very bodies as a means of laying our case before the conscious of the community. We endured postponement after postponement, having aided in this community need. We felt that our direct action could be delayed no longer. You may ask, why direct action? Isn't negotiation a better path? You are quite right in calling for negotiation. Indeed, this is the very purpose of direct action. Nonviolent direct action seeks to create such a crisis and foster such a tension that a community which has consistently refused to negotiate is brought to the understanding to confront the issue. It seeks to dramatize the issue so it can no longer be ignored. My citing the creation of tension as part of the work of the nonviolent resistor may sound rather shocking, but I must confess that I am not afraid of the word tension. 
I have earnestly opposed violent tension, but there is a type of constructive nonviolent tension which is necessary for change. Nonviolent action creates the kind of tension in society that will help people rise from the dark depths of prejudice and racism to the majestic heights of understanding and brotherhood. The purpose of our direct action is to create a situation so crisis packed that it will inevitably open the door to negotiation. I therefore concur with you in your call for negotiation. My friends, I must say to you that we have not made a single gain in civil rights without determined legal and nonviolent pressure. Lamentably, it is a historical fact that privileged groups seldom give up their privileges voluntarily. We know through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Frankly, I have yet to engage in direct action campaign that was well-timed in the view of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. For years now, I have heard the word wait. It rings in the ear of every black person with piercing familiarity. This wait almost inevitably means never. We must come to see justice too long delayed is justice denied. Let's emulate Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and the great John Lewis and find some good trouble to get into, to create justice for all. Let's tell our children and grandchildren, not just what we thought, but what we did for justice. Blessed be. I remember stories that my grandpa used to tell about the olden days when very few were living well. When times were hard and most folks lived with trouble and despair. And meanwhile those in power never saw or seemed to care. Now history does repeat itself as some things never change. So when I start to lose all hope, I think of what my grandma used to say. Sometimes you gotta make a way. Sometimes you gotta take a stand. Sometimes you simply gotta get right up, speak your mind, tell the truth. Oh yes, no more thoughts of giving up. No more thoughts of giving in. No more waiting, oh so patiently, quietly, cautiously. Oh no, now it's time to take a chance. Now it's time to face your fear. Now it's time to use your voice. Now you haven't any choice. Oh no, it's not a time for asking why. And it's not a time for me or my. And it's not a time for standing by. It's a time for rising up. Sometimes you gotta make a way. Sometimes you gotta take a stand. Sometimes you simply gotta stir things up. Call them out. Scream and shout. 
Oh yes, now it's time to spread your wings. Now it's time to state your case. Now it's time to speak up fearlessly, forcefully, urgently. Oh yes, sometimes you gotta make a way. Sometimes you gotta take a stand. Sometimes you simply gotta get right up, speak your mind, tell the truth. Sometimes you gotta make a way. 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 I want to thank you all for coming this morning. And as I extinguish our chalice, please join me in the words for carrying the light forward. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of love, or the fire of courage. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Please join us for our Zoom coffee hour. If you don't have the link easily accessible, you can go to your Zoom app or zoom.com online and enter the following meeting number, 827-799-4105. Again, 827-799-4105. The password is UUSP. We hope to see you all there as it always is uplifting to, to see people, even if it is in a little box. My hands are strong enough. They're strong enough and I'm good enough. My hands are strong enough to give love. I know that I My arms are long enough, they're long enough, and I'm good enough. My arms are long enough, they give love. I know that I My heart is wide enough, it's wide enough, I'm good enough. My heart is wide enough to give love. My light is bright in the light, it's bright in the light, I'm good in the light. My light is bright in the light, it's love. And my heart is wide in the light, I'm good in the I know that my arms are long in the light, I'm good in the light. My hands are strong enough to give love. 